Welcome to the Female Founder Friday podcast. I'm your host, Lindsay White. I am super excited to be celebrating Women's History Month on the podcast. The truth is on this show, we celebrate the history that women make every single day. We are always talking about their journeys to being female founders, their greatest achievements, and of course, all the incredible lessons they've learned along the way. In these next four episodes during the month of March, feature some truly amazing female entrepreneurs as we wrap up our season three. And would you believe that over the last three years and three seasons that we've had over 150 episodes and we are absolutely thrilled to be one of the top podcasts for women in business. Now we've got something really exciting for season four. We are going to be launching Female Founder Unplugged. We're going to do a little rebrand here on the podcast. So make sure that you are subscribed and share with all of your friends. Don't forget to take our leadership style quiz now because we're going to be talking about that during the show today. You're going to hear about the guest leadership style and you can compare your own. You can find that link in the show notes. And while you're there, check out the link to my Rockstar Recruitment Bootcamp that is coming up starting the 25th of March. This free five-day bootcamp is all about helping female entrepreneurs and small business owners feel supremely confident in recruiting the top talent they need for their business. I am pulling out all the tips, all the tricks, all the best practices that I have learned over 20 years working in human resources to help you be awesome at your recruitment and find that rock star. You can find both of those links in the show notes. Now let's get to today's exciting episode. Awesome. Well, today on the podcast, I have a really special guest, someone that I have been working with myself for the last several months, and every moment of our time together has been a pleasure. I have my good friend and business strategist, Jan Ditchfield, and Jan is a business strategist. She is not a business coach, and she makes that really clear, Um, and she really helps female entrepreneurs Um, perfect their operations, really dive in to the strategy behind that and really become crystal clear on the businesses they want to create, the revenue they want to generate and and how to do that in a way that makes sense for them, builds the business that they really dream about. That's certainly what she's been helping me with. Um, And she creates incredible communities uh, of women who are just really deeply connected to their business and and want to achieve. Um, And so I'm super glad to have her with me today. Thank you, Jan, for spending some time with me. I appreciate it. No, I'm so happy to be here. And thank you for the honor to be on the show. This is lovely. Oh yeah. I, I actually, I've been bugging Jan for probably about six months now and between her incredibly busy schedule and my wacky schedule, um, we finally made it happen. So this is fantastic. Um, Jan, I know, you know, you've told me some of your incredible journey to developing the beautiful business you have, but I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff. I don't know. So, you know, tell us about that. How did you become a female founder? It was by necessity more than anything else. I think, I think we all um, kind of jumped into this wild world because there was some catalyst, some reason that we were like, I think I'm done with my career and I want to do something different. (laughs) That was for me what it was. Um, I had a really long standing career as a, I was a very well-known and well-respected professional fundraiser. And I did that for a very long time and raised an unbelievable amount of money and really operated kind of as a gun for hire in the later part of my career where we'd go in and fix failing nonprofits and charities, raise money and leave. And when I became a mom later in life, I decided I was going to stay home, have extended mat leave, really appreciate this, yeah. this part of my life I never thought I would get. And I swore that after that, I was never going to go back to my career. I was like, I'm going to start something new. I'm going to, you know, explore new options, this new opportunity. It's a rebirth for everybody type of thing. Yeah. And I walked right back into my career is what <laughs> I did. And I walked into probably one of the most toxic situations I had ever been. And I worked in a lot of toxic, like you don't call me because things are going well. I'm not that person that gets the phone. Going, Everything's going great, Jan. You want to come work with us? It's the opposite. So so I walked into one of those situations and kind of got in there and I was like, I'm done. Like I, I can't, do, I don't want to do this anymore. 
I'm, I'm going to burn my whole career to the ground. I literally picked up my briefcase, put my laptop in it and walked out of the door and walked away from a 20 plus career year career yeah. and overnight. And I had to figure out what I was going to do. So it's, you know, what am I good at business? You know, what am I really good at making money? What can I do? Teach women how to be really good at business and make money. And so this is where I am now. <laughs> That's how it happened. Really. I love that. I love that. And I, I love that sort of, <laughs> that's a totally oversimplified version of what you actually do for women like me. Uh, <laughs> let me be clear, Jen does a whole lot more, but I think that it's so beautifully said, right? How to run a business that's really meaningful, you're really passionate about, and how to make it really generate the revenue that you really know it can. Like, I think yeah. that is so powerful. And I think, Jen, what is so brilliant is that because you've spent such a long time working in that nonprofit space and fundraising, that's money that comes from the heart, right? People give to charities, they give to nonprofits because they believe in the impact they make. And I think that that's the synergy you bring to the business space is that we as female entrepreneurs, we believe so passionately about what we do and the value that we add. And so there's a connection there. We just, we need the money to come so we can continue to grow and deliver what we're doing. Um, so I think that that's so important, that connection that you bring to that. Yeah, I appreciate that, that I, I, women are really marketed to differently when it comes to business development. And I feel like, especially in the online space, I came from the real world into the online space and I kind of walked in, I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> like, it's just so radically different, yes. especially in the way that information is delivered. I mean, critical information, like understanding data and understanding how to make analytical decisions and understanding how to separate out the passion from the, the pragmatic approach to business. Yeah. And that's something that I feel I can come in and offer to women is like, I'm going to fuel your passion like crazy, but I'm going to put a whole lot of pragma pragmatism in me with that as well, because I think it's important that we also are approaching things, not just with our hearts, but with our heads. So I like to think of myself as that balance between the two worlds of, I really love what I'm doing and I'm really passionate about it. And then the other side, which is like, we're just here to make money. And I'm like, eh, why don't we bring the two things together? And then we'll have yeah. really good businesses that make an impact in the world, but also pay you. And I think that's kind of the zone that I, I tend to, you know, kind of, that's my, my lane of expertise, so to speak, is that world. Yeah. And, and you're right. I think that that is so important because so many of us, we get into our own business, like, just like you, we leave the corporate world because some normally something bad happens. Like, let's yeah. be honest about it. It's, yeah. Right. Or there's a, there's an inflection point right? We do have kids and we decide that actually going back to the grind just isn't going to serve anybody. But we, we're we passionate about a product or a service, but we don't necessarily know how to run a business. And that, I think for me, that's what's been a challenge is it's a full-time job just figuring out how to run this goddamn thing successfully and make money. But what I'm really passionate about is coaching leaders and developing people strategy for their business. Like I'm not actually passionate about spreadsheets and yeah. PLs and, and, and SOPs and all of those other alphabet soup that you could put together. Like that's actually the hard part for so many of us, Jen. And you know, what you do is really help us explore, understand, and like you said, make it easy and pragmatic. Yeah. I feel like it's, you know, pr professionalizing entrepreneurship is really what it is and learning yeah. women, learning how to become professional entrepreneurs, because again, what you're taught is like, it's really easy. You just go to sit on a beach and you're going to make money hand over oh, passive God. income, like passive income. Everyone tosses that around. And it isn't that simple. Like, and, and a lot of the time, like I work solely with experts. So every woman I work with is an expert in whether it's through university, whether it's through uh, like their careers or whether it's through life, yeah. like you own your expertise, you know yeah. it inside and out. But when you think with an expert brain all the time and not think with an entrepreneurial brain, like thinking like a business owner, wow. that's when decisions are not necessarily the best for you. And it's very easy for us to lean into the things that we love and ignore the things like our revenue lines. And like, is that a plus or a negative that's yeah. on that bottom line? Right. And just think, oh, everything's going great in the business when in fact things are not going well and, and they could be a lot better for you. Mm -hmm. And I just want to see women succeed. More of us need to be sitting at the top. Like there's no glass ceiling in this world. So I, it's just, it's all about getting solid foundations underneath you. And then you're limitless after that.
Yeah. You know, that's really true. When you are running your own business, when you're an entrepreneur, the, the glass ceiling evaporates because the sky truly is the limit. Yes, you need a really solid foundation. You need great advice and partners to work with. And I think that's, I mean, you and I have had that conversation more than once. There are a whole bunch of shysters and charlatans out there, right? That just, they actually are full of shit. Like they just don't tell the truth. They are only interested in making money. And that's the tricky part, I think, sometimes for, for us as new female entrepreneurs to disseminate. But when you figure it out, you got the right people, there is no limit right? Yeah, no, it's true. Like you can do whatever you want to do. And it's just really going to be about what's your strategy, what's your operations plan now execute it. That yeah. is it, it's, I know it sounds simplistic, but it really isn't that complicated, but yeah. it's figuring out what that strategy is. Yes. That's the complicated part. After that, it's pretty easy to roll it out. It's just like, what's that deep work to figure out where is your lane what should you be doing? What should you not be doing? Yes. Like that's kind of the stuff we need to get figured out right off the bat. Yeah. I mean, actually, I think that's a great point. Like, what should you not be doing? Where are you starting to get outside of your wheelhouse? And yeah, maybe you have some curiosity, some passion around that, but like, Hey, just a second, like, let's, let's rein this thing in. Cause I do think, you know, we, 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 I think as entrepreneurs, we feel like we got a lot of stuff to offer a lot of different people, but that gets hard to manage and you got to stay focused. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I always think there's, there's a better way to take out your people. I'm going to say it this way. People always think that when they're an entrepreneur, they're very squirrely. And I don't agree with that. I think that entrepreneurial brains fire differently yeah. in a genius way because yeah. we see problems differently than what average people see problems yeah. or people who work in like, you know, who are, would never think about doing what yeah. we're doing. Like, you know, the normal people of the world who don't decide <laughs> yes. to shut their own businesses. Yes. Right. But we see problems and we automatically find inventive solutions to them. So it's difficult to tame that brain. And I don't think it needs to be tamed. I just think it needs to be put into the right categories and the right places. And that's what it is. But that's why that plan yeah. matters so much. Let's put it in a plan and park the rest. Right. And then you can yeah. fire all day long, but you're at least firing in the same direction. Yeah. Yeah. The direction. I think that that's exactly it is that we do, we, we see solutions all over the place. We don't just think outside of the box. We're crushing the box. And sometimes we just can get really carried away with that. Um, and that's what then dilutes message that dilutes brand. And ultimately, yeah. Are you really generating the revenue? I mean, cause this is what I love about Jen. Her, her message is about like, you want to, you got to make money and it's okay to make money. It's okay to want to make money. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Women are not told that, it, that we have permission to want to actually create wealth where we are told yeah. to be okay with, you know, whatever we get, we should be ashamed of talking about money. And I'm always like, where did this dialogue come from? Like, right, I know where it came from. Like, we can always say good old patriarchy, but right. it's the fact is, is that we should be allowed to want to, to earn and to show up. And the earnings that we're doing again are making a difference in other people's lives. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. We're no. doing this completely ethically based on our talents and our skills and our ability. And we deserve to be paid for that. Yeah. Yeah, we do. And you know what, I, I, that I think you're right. It's a conversation that I know I struggle with. I know a lot of women that you and I work with or in our networks or even women on the show, like just this concept of charging for what you're worth and not just what the hourly rate is, but all of that beautiful, brilliant background, the education, the credentials, all of that stuff that has value like right now in this moment. And that's hard for us. Why do you think that is, Jen? I think because a lot of the time we've never been invited to sit at the tables. We've always been told that we have to sit against the wall or if we are at the table, we're never at the head of it. And there, and this comes directly from my career that I, I was the person who was brought in to raise the money. And I raised, I've now, I, honestly, I don't even count it anymore. It's way past $20 million I've been responsible for at this point. Um, and that's low balling it. I really should update my stats because it's been, <laughs> I, I don't even know what it is at this point. But I remember all of those conversations of coming into the boardrooms and being told, oh, you can sit against the wall. We're going to like, you know, all the C-suite and all the seniors will sit here. And I was like, no, no, I brought the money in the room. I'm going to sit at the table. This is the way it's going to work. But that was shocking. 
I think for a lot of people, and I think a lot of executives, you know, and also I think seeing younger women coming up and coming through like that, our Gen Xers, as they kind of, we rose right in our careers yeah. for a while, we did things very differently and the, we didn't get the guidance that we needed. We were very, there was not a lot of mentorship. And so it was a, for us, a big, everything we learned, we had to learn it through survival. That yeah. really, like, we all were latchkey kids, right? And then we became yeah. latchkey kids in our careers. So <laughs> yes. that, I think that, like, you know, sit there, do your thing, be pretty, serve your space, but don't actually show up and voice um, how good you are at something that's been just drilled into women's heads for so long. And I disagree with it fully. Like, I'm, I'm the person that's like, turn the light up. Who cares if somebody else in the room is intimidated by it? They, that's their issue. That's right. Yeah. Not your issue. That's their issue. Yeah. yeah. Turn the light yeah. up. Let's do this. Yeah. We didn't have, you know, cause uh, you and I serve a very similar client and that's, that's ultimately that's who's listening to this show. It, like as, as Gen Xers, we didn't have accelerators. We didn't have containers. We didn't, there was none of that to actually teach us the things we needed to know either in our corporate careers, or even now as entrepreneurs, those are all geared to Gen Z's and startups and tech firms. And like, that's not us. And that's what we have to learn the hard way. And we continue as Gen Xers to just do it ourselves. We're that generation, right? Yeah. But that's what, makes it, that's what makes it tricky when you leave a corporate career and you think, I do want to start a business, but I don't have a hot clue how to do that. That's what yeah. makes it tough. It is. It, it does. And that's why I feel like the role that I take on and, the, and that I kind of fill, especially in that online space is teaching you how to actually become an entrepreneur yeah. because there is no, like you can go to business school and I went to business school. So I always say like, don't, you don't need to do what I did it for you. And I'm going to accelerate <laughs> your learning process because it's cheaper and I'm a lot more fun <laughs> working <laughs> yes. with me. Yeah. But, but those things, those fundamental practices, the things you learn in business school, we need to have those in our businesses. We yeah. need to understand those, those pieces. And it's more than just marketing. And there's so much focus and pressure put on marketing as being the, the end all be all to a business, especially your success. And I always try to say like, it's a single piece of the overall strategy. Yeah. There's like, there's five other pieces that you have to master on top of just marketing. And if you just focus on the marketing thing, then you're marketing whole lot of something to nothing, right? Yeah. Because you're going to lose business because of it. You'll have incredible refund requests that come through. Yeah. You're going to drown underneath your business because you just don't know how to have your back end set up properly. Yeah. There's a lot more to it than just showing up on Instagram and getting a hit reel. Like it's far more complicated than that. Yeah. Yeah. And like, what, what, like, what do you think is going to happen when you when your reel goes viral, if it ever really does, right? What are you going to do with all of that? Yeah. Uh, if that miracle transpires. Um, one of the things that I, I think has been really powerful for me also is, you know, in the business planning that we did prior to the new year here in 2024 was actually being really thoughtful and intentional about what's the time off look like? Like, what does the development plan look like as an entrepreneur? including the vacations, including the books you're going to like, what do you need to constantly be working on? Cause I think we forget about that in all the hustle of building a business. We do completely. And, and that's one of the things that I put into all of my planning that I do with every woman I work with is what's the plan for you. Yeah. And we'd also talk about the plan for you being, what is your wellness plan? Like, where yeah. are you actually focusing on your health, your mental health, your well being? because we can't operate at the level that we want to operate at if we're not caring for ourselves. 100%. And again, nobody says, Hey, you know, are you booking vacation time? Are you, you know, are you making sure that you're getting enough sleep? Are you, you know, fueling your body? Are you eating lunch? You know, these yeah. things that we just kind of skip our way through and we're like, Oh, we'll get to it. when We get to it. But that's not healthy for business development at all. Cause you just don't function as effectively as you could. So no. we we do look at things very differently. The way I teach is it's very holistic. My approach to business it's not just a single here's a one trick pony strategy or technique I'm going to teach you. It's yeah. this is how to do this well. That's what we're looking at. And and for the long term, because I think that's some of the messages that we hear online is like here's the take this blue pill and we'll fix all of your problems. But realistically, it only fixes perhaps a moment in time, even if it works at all. 
And again, because we want to build these sustainable businesses that are profitable and actionable and really realistic for our lifestyle over the period of time, whether you're building a legacy business that you're going to sell or pass on to your kids, or you're just building a lifestyle business that's going to get you to the retirement, that that's a the, we're building for the long game here. And that I think is so much of the message that we don't get as female entrepreneurs. We've been, I think, very inundated with this concept of like dopamine firing and this immediate gratification that comes from it. So like here, it's all about one launch or it's about one reel or it's about one moment in time. Yeah. And that's how we define success. And like I always say, you know, I come from fundraising. Like we don't define anything by a single moment in fundraising, like ever, because that's how you get in trouble to begin with. Like we, yeah. we're looking at the big picture and the big scope. And if you don't have that, like you don't need to have it planned out to like 20 years down the line. I know what I'm doing, <laughs> but at least you want to be able to say like how we approach it, right? When we work together is what's the next 365 looking like? Yeah. And we're going to take the 365 and chunk it off, off that big, big target you might have. Great. We cleared a year next year. Let's clear the year yeah. instead of it always being like in the moment. It's this is a long-term game. Like it's, uh. I, it's a, cliche, but we're running marathons here. So one yeah. water station at a time, that's how we're looking at. Totally. Well, and even, you know, as we're sort of nearing the end of Q1, I'm already thinking about, okay, well, we've actually got into January planned for next year. So starting 2025 and then, yeah, what are we going to take from what we learn already in Q1 start to plot? And so it becomes cumulative and iterative um, because you're not reinventing the wheel every year. You're learning, you're growing, you're iterating, and then so on and so forth. Because it can be hard as a small business owner to think, well, what do I want it to look like in three years? That feels like a long time, actually. Um, and so I think the idea that you break it off in, in what is a sort of a manageable chunk at a time is really, it's been the best approach for me and I can see why it works for so many others. Yeah. And the first six months, like, especially I think in, you start every year off with great goals and we look at it and that's why we approach everything by quarters, right? We're like, okay, well, Q1, this was the goal. Did you hit it? Did you miss it? Okay. We missed it. We've got three more quarters that we can figure this out. Yeah. Like this, It's not the end of the world. If you had a failed launch or it's not the end of the world, if you missed a target, we have a lot of time left to do this within. And that's my, my approach to everything is that, you know, everything's fixable. If something's not going right in the business, it's fixable. Nothing is that far gone. And I've worked in some really far gone places. <laughs> and I'm like, trust me, everything is fixable. Everything totally. is. Well, and just the ability, you make a plan, but the ability, my, I mean, mine's already shifted. It's only the beginning of March. And my plan for 2024 is already going to look different. It's just yep. the way the cookie crumbles. And you got to stay flexible um, but if you don't have some kind of plan, some kind of goal, how do you even know where you're going? I mean, that's the important part. Yeah, it is a hundred percent. And goal setting is not again, taught very often to women, especially it's uh, with, when it comes to financial goal setting. And we do a lot of financial goal setting with the women I work with. It's just understanding how do we take that big number, break it down into those chunks. And now how do we execute the chunks? And that's all it is. It's just literally like one piece of a pie after the next piece. Uh, and then it turns into a really great big piece of pie or big pie at the end, but we yeah. have to do it chunk by chunk. That's the only way you're going to get there. That's how you fundraise. It's the same idea. If yeah. I walked into an organization, I'd say, how much money do you need me to make for you a raise? And they'd be like, well, we need like 8 million. We need 1.2 million. We need half a million. It was all over the gamut. And I never did that in a single action. That was done with a very strategic plan of campaigning and regular sales cycles. And that's what I teach is like, here's how to actually sell like a fundraiser and let's do regular sales cycles. We build it on top of it. We get the momentum going. We move as it moves. We learn, like you know, what I always talk about, right? Feel the pulse of your business. Yeah. Understand your business and react to it strategically. You're fine. You'll be totally fine. You can figure yeah. anything out. And I think the key is strategically as opposed to like, you know, the harebrained kind of overreaction. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I think that's that's a cycle that I see a lot of female entrepreneurs get wrapped up in is like, 
you said one failed launch, the quarter didn't line up the way I wanted it to. And I like hit the panic button, try and find the thing I'm using air quotes, the thing that's going to fix it. And that is like, to me, that's the spiral that just leads to nowhere. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. not the Kool-Aid you want to be drinking. Like, that's why I talk about like, let's be less emotional about this and let's right <laughs> be emotional about the outcomes, right? Be yeah. emotional about the money that you're making and the impact it has on yourself and your family. Be emotional about the people you serve, yeah. but the data, no emotion with that, right? Like we're here is their numbers. And the only reason why those numbers have feelings associated to them is because we did that. So yeah. we can undo it as well. And yeah. uh, the numbers will tell you what to do every single time. So look at them, learn them, understand them, adjust. That's all yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pivot, as they say, pivot. pivot. Yeah, 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 pivot. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the meme the other day with Ross holding the couch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a total Gen X thing. Yeah. Um, so Jan has already taken my leadership style quiz. If you want to give it a shot, it's in the show notes. Go to the website, highvoltageleadership.ca, hit the button that says take the quiz. Uh, and then you can compare what notes with Jan and what kind of leader you are. Uh, so Jan, what, like what's your leadership style and what does that mean in your life and business? So I think my, like my leadership style is, is the, what's the term you give me the right terms again. There's four of them. I want to make sure I'm getting saying yeah. the right one. Are you yeah. a director, a delegator, a supporter, or a coach? So I must, I think that I'm more along the lines of a supporter, that that's really kind of where wow. I come up with my style yeah. is more the support style. I think I did a lot. I had a lot of teams when I was in my career, there's a, managed a ton of people, um, big teams, little teams, all the teams. And it's been interesting for me. I find the thing I'm learning about myself is shifting from being a somebody in the real world who has that leadership style into running my own business and my leadership style is more challenging when you're running your own business and you have to bring in team members and you're yeah. thou the boss and you're the one creating the playbook and you're the one who has, it's very, very different than running somebody else's playbook. I okay. found that a lot of the time. So I think that like my, my leadership style while supportive, I still also think in a lot of ways is, is something that I need to develop to become even better with what it is so that I, I can learn also to delegate more because I'm that I would say is a big failure of mine is delegation. And it's, I'm, I'm the, I will just keep taking it on because I'm yeah. like, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Or I can do it better. And that's not always the case, right? We all have our blind spots and that's one of mine. I don't think you're alone. I think a lot of female entrepreneurs fall into that space of not being able to be effective in the delegation and then the subsequent coaching, right? Because as soon as you delegate, then you you have to coach that other person to deliver in a way that you appreciate and, and makes an impact. And so I think you're right. Like we can be directors, tell people what to do. Here's what I want, when I want it, and how I want it done. Um, we, we can, you know, we can move into that supporter space that then's like, okay, great. You did a great job. Here's the next thing. Right. But moving to the delegator and then the coach, I think that is a difficult transition for so many. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I, I think again, especially when it's your own baby and it's different for me, it wasn't my baby when in my career, it was somebody else's baby. Right. I just came in to make sure it wasn't going to drown in the bathwater. That was kind of my, my role. <laughs> But here, this is my baby. It's yeah. my, the women I work with mean so much to me, my vision. It's my legacy that I'm building at this time. So it's hard to pass that off to be yeah. able to say, oh, I'm going to trust you to see this the same way that I do yeah. and, and let go of that, like, you know, the control. That's really yeah. what it comes down to. And I'm type A, I'm as A as you possibly can get. So it's, <laughs> it's hard to, to DA your, yourself a little bit when it comes to I leadership. Think, yeah, I think so many of us are, but I, you just said something that's really critical is, you know, first of all, really being clear about what your leadership style is. Cause we all do different, like we all lead differently knowing what your edge is, right? So you just identified it. That's what I struggle with delegation. That's something that I'm not great at. And why? Because I'm really passionate about this business. It's my legacy. I love the women that I work with. Like, be clear about why you're hanging on to stuff is the first step in letting go. Like, that's the truth. And then you're in an enviable position where you are, you're 
business is next leveling. And so you see clearly that your leadership needs to, to level up as well. And that's moving into that strategic CEO space of our leadership, right? We're not leading tasks anymore. We're leading other people. And you're right. That's different when the, when the business belongs to us, when the product is a product of us. There's a different level of commitment there, um, but it's really important that we transition and lead at that next level uh, so that our business does continue to grow, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And that's one of the reasons I came to you because I, I knew I couldn't do this without getting somebody else who knew more than I did to help me get through this very awkward spot of how do I transition? Like you said, my business is growing, it's up leveling. We're getting to new, like, you know, it's going in a way that I only had dreamt of, honestly, oh, when yeah. I started it. And so following it and making sure that that continues to go is going to take more than just me. And it means that I have to go into a different role within the business. And that's also scary and hard to think about, you know, I don't need to be the person to do all the things anymore. I need to be a CEO now. I have to step up. I need to start to hire and get the things in behind me so that I'm making the smart decisions and leading the vision. Yeah. 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 That's exactly it because that becomes the biggest part of your new Uh, leadership role is that visionary piece and then being the Pied Piper and getting everyone on your team along behind that and really believing in it as deeply as you do. Um, And, and it's, it's a must do because I see, I was just talking with someone the other day about a female entrepreneur that we were both involved with and she's struggling with that. Um, The, the sort of my precious approach Uh, to all of the things in the business. And the truth is she's become a real bottleneck. Like she's causing her business not to grow in that same astronomical way that I know yours is because she can't stop touching it. And there's literally not enough hours in her day to actually do all the things. And so balls get dropped, cracks start to form and clients fall into them um, because she really is struggling to relinquish some of the tasks Uh, And trust, right? Because you have to have actually deep trust in yourself first and then trust in the others. And and it's it's actually really hard to watch because she's kind of burning herself to the ground a little bit. Yeah. So I think it's cool that you've recognized that, Jan. Yeah. Well, I think it's that piece that you said, right, is the trust in yourself. That's the that's Um, the piece. And and for me, again, like. I know where I want my business to go and I know what I want to do with it. And I'm also humble enough to understand that I am the problem in my own business in certain areas. <laughs> yeah. right? I am like, I know I'm the bottleneck. I'm the reason why things are stuck or why things are not happening. And if I want to get where I want to go, I have to get myself out of it. That's yeah. the only thing. And, and I've always understood that. I've always that, that had so many conversations again with leaders that where I was coming in and being like, listen, you're a problem. We need to fix you. <laughs> right. And, and not speaking to people who had enough um, humility to understand that if we just let go of the ego, great things will happen because of it. Right. right. And and I never wanted to be that person. So I'm I'm willing to kind of eat the crow with my own leadership style to in order to get my business where I want it to be. Totally. But that 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 was a lot of work to get to that point. I'll say that. No, so. and, but I I thank you for saying that because I think you're right. There is a humbleness that is that comes into play, and also being humble enough to recognize that actually you you got to hire the really smart person and then let the really smart person do the work that you've hired them to do, um, and that actually you're not an expert at all of that stuff. Like, hey, I'm good, but I'm not that good. Like <laughs> that's the moment. Yeah. Um, and, and then trusting that you've hired that really great rock star to come in and just drive that piece, um, and then move into that coaching space where you're just encouraging and growing and, and, and allowing them to really flourish. Cause that's what, that's what creates the momentum. So I, Jen, I love that you highlighted that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you because you've been doing this and, and you're so beautifully open about it. Where have you screwed it up or made mistakes and what have you learned? Oh my goodness. Okay. How long do we have? <laughs> so <laughs> we um, I think for me, the bigger, a lot of the screw ups have come from hiring the wrong people at the wrong time and trying to fill roles through uh, patchwork, like l- thinking that, you know, um, contractors and VAs and all of those like patchwork positions will take care of the bigger problems in the business. And, th- you know, you don't know what you don't know. 
came into the online space and it is different here and you get a different thing said to you and talked to you about than what would be in a kind of a real world business, so to speak, where you're going through different hiring processes in different ways. So I think for me, that's been a big piece is the learning how to build teams effectively in my business. And I knew how to build teams effectively in other people's businesses. So that was a real kind of like, Ooh, we've got some things to learn. Don't we there Ditchfield (laughs) moment, try to figure that one out. I'm, I feel that a lot of the things like the other big mistake I made and I made it early on. So I'm kind of glad I did it. And I got it out of the way was believing that I had to have that guru thought process in my business or the guru advice, or I had to have that kind of mentorship in order to be successful here. Mm -hmm. And that is so fed to us in the online space again, that if you want to be successful, you need to, you know, it's only A, B, C, D, or E are the only people you can work with who will get you there. And the hard part for me has always been uh, because I'm so advanced in business, walking into any kind of mentorship where the, I can tell the minute I'm sitting with somebody, I know more than them. And that's hard, right? <laughs> to be like, I'm paying you a lot of money to help me yeah. in my business. And you're doing things and telling me things that I'm like, by the way, that's illegal. You know, like <laughs> you just might want to curb that advice there, butter. So that for me was a big one is really understanding how to hire the right help more effectively and not based on what the trends were saying or the gurus or names, but based on what I actually needed to have in the business and what was going to complement me and my skills instead of it just being about somebody's famous name. Yeah, totally. And I I think we do get bombarded with that. You can't, Mm -hmm. you can't go on any platform and not just like every third or fourth piece is some guru related activity. Build your email list, go viral on reels. You should be on TikTok. Like all of this junk that has its place, but it it is just, it is so present and it causes us to ignore what we know is the right thing to do in our own business. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the piece I always say as well is like, listen to your intuition in in business. And we, we can't allow that voice to be squashed. And we certainly shouldn't be allowing that voice to be dictated by our Instagram following or the size of our email list or any of these stats that people always throw. Like you're nobody unless you have 10,000 followers on Instagram. And it's like, I run a multiple six figure business that's moving towards seven figures. And I have like a teeny tiny email list and a teeny tiny following but I know how to run my business and I care about the women I work with and I treat them well. And I do all of those things that are not taught in the online space, which is customer relations and retention strategies and selling yeah. like, to people, not just selling in funnels, but to people. Yeah. Let's treat yeah, people well. Humans. humans selling yes. Humans. Let's do things ethically. Yeah. Yes. So I always encourage that with women is, you know, this is your business. You need to build it the way that feels right to you. You, yes, you absolutely have to have fundamentals in place. There's certain foundational things that we all need, but you can tailor that to your own style from there. It doesn't need to be cookie cutter. It shouldn't be cookie cutter. Yeah, it should not. That, that is the truth. And, and I've fallen victim to that too, where I was involved in a program. I didn't spend too much money on it. Thank God. Um, you know, but the funny thing is when you're listening to your gut, you know, almost right away that it's not right for you. Right. That, that, that tactic, that approach, that is never going to work for me. I am uncomfortable with that. I don't want to do it. It doesn't feel right. Um, And I think we persist in some of that junk because we should, that somehow our own intuition, our own understanding, our own passion isn't good enough. And to me, that's the kind of stuff that I, I know you want to get rid of. And I most certainly do that inner critic stuff that tells us that we don't know what we're doing and nobody's going to want to work with us. And who do we think we are to start a business? Like that stuff's just garbage. It's absolute garbage. And it's what causes us to buy into that guru BS uh, that gets us into trouble. Yeah. It serves you 
like there's nothing, there's nothing good ever comes from sitting and saying, I'm not good enough at something, or I'm never going to be successful at this, or I'm not going to make it like that language, that thought process drives me crazy when I hear that. Of course, you wouldn't be here if you didn't, you weren't good enough. Like, right. You, you have already proven you're good enough. You just need to learn how to run a business. That's, that's all it is. It's that simple, right? It's not about the scarcity mindset. And it's not about, you know, all of the other, like you just, you're afraid of success, which is my other one where it rolled my eyes roll back into my head. When I hear that it's, you're just missing fundamental skills. We go to school to fill in gaps. I'm your school. That's all it is, right? Come, I will fill your gaps in. Yeah. Go do your thing. That's all it is. Yeah. 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 You're afraid of success. I I also love that, you know, you can manifest it into being. No, that is absolutely not the truth. You can have the right mindset. That's really critical. You can tell Jan's got the right mindset. I've been, I've been working with Jan on my business mindset, but you're not just going to sit there and mindfulness and and meditation and manifest yourself a business. You got to do the work. I mean, that's the other part that's really, really critical. You got to be prepared to work hard, probably harder than you ever worked in your corporate career. But if you're really passionate about what you do, the work is pleasurable. You enjoy doing most of the things. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a, a grit that's required to do this for a living. I think that's what it is. And, and we, because there's a, you're, it's hard. This is not an easy career that we've chosen to become entrepreneurs and to to do this. This is this is not. We don't get three weeks off a year. There's nobody's taking the taxes off our paychecks. There's no, like there's nobody. There's no manual sitting there where we can just look and go. Oh, what do I do now? And kind of, I will write the manual if you work with me. But yeah. normally there's yeah, no manual. Exactly. You have to create yeah. the manual. That's create it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. But it's is learning how to get up when you've been knocked down, that's the thing you need to master. Cause if you can't do that, this is not the right career. And I, and I say that with love, but yeah. if you can't keep getting back up when you get smacked, then there's some, something better for you somewhere else. Cause this one, you're going to get smacked on a daily basis and you just have to learn to roll with it. That's yeah. what it is. And that's grit. That really is what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that resiliency muscle, you gotta yeah. have, you gotta have a really strong resiliency muscle to be an entrepreneur because yeah. it's not going to go the way you want it. It's not going to go the way you laid it out in your business strategy. You right. have got to be able to shift and change and be nimble Um, and not get hung up on what happened yesterday so that it impacts where you're headed tomorrow. That I have um, learned in spades over the last few years, especially with COVID. I mean, that was like the ultimate curveball for all of us, but particularly as entrepreneurs with very little in terms of safety net, that was the ultimate curveball for sure. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, it was like, and I built my business during the pandemic and I, I built it during lockdown with a two-year-old under my desk. <laughs> and that was like the you talk about resiliency. I'll tell you that was right? it. So, but you know, again, knowing what to do in the business and knowing how to respond to it effectively yeah. is going to be the thing that gets you through every single time. hundred yeah. percent. Well, and, and maybe I'd leave everybody with this message. Like if, if you're listening to the show and you're still running your business after COVID, like, congratulations, you have a hundred percent track record of figuring shit out. Keep going, right? Like you're still standing. Um, yep. and, uh, you, you know, you, you got this far, so, uh, you got, you got this. Um, and I think COVID proved that to so many of us, like still here. Um, yep. and, uh, okay, you go, right. Yeah. Jen, thank you. Um, it has been such a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. Um, I will put in a little plug here. I've been doing some incredible work with Jan. You need to follow her on Instagram. We'll have that uh, in the show notes for you. Uh, but if you are a female entrepreneur and you know your business back end in particular needs some work um, and you're like me, maybe you're not a sales expert. The good news is Jen is, um, and so you definitely need to go and, and check her out. We we do great work and we have a lot of fun, don't we, Jen? We do. We absolutely do. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for your time. I'm very grateful to have you as a guest. Oh, thank you so much. I adore you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Wow, I am so lucky. I get to have the best conversation 
conversations with the most incredible female entrepreneurs. And I hope you enjoyed the show too. If you did, can you go and give me a five-star review wherever you listen to this podcast and share it with a couple of your business besties? I'd really appreciate your support. And I'd also love to see you at the free Rockstar Recruitment Bootcamp that's going live on March the 25th. We're going to spend an hour a day together every day that week to really talk about my best tips and tricks to help you as a female founder find the top talent that you need for your business. And of course, you're absolutely welcome to bring one of your business besties with you. Thanks again for being here today, and I hope you can join us for the next episode. Thank you.